Howdy, this is Chuck with Simply Nuck, and this is Phantom Canyon, the long-awaited replacement for Hades Canyon. Uh, this is a prototype box. The production box will actually look different. Let's take a look at it today. There is a unit, which I've already peeled the plastic protective film off of. And in the bottom is a stand, so you can now stand the unit uh, vertically. Yes. And there is our Visa mounting plate with the screws and a 230 watt power supply with a US power cord, the same power supply that was used for Hades. And then we're gonna show you something cool about the skull in that you can replace it with your own images. And for the prototypes, they, were, they provided me with four sheets. Um, I don't know if production units will have it, but I suspect they will based on what I've heard from them. And regardless, you can always do your own. All right, and this is Phantom Canyon. All right, taking a look at the front, starting with the right side, we have an illuminated power switch, which also will blank or change colors for standby. We have our 3.5 millimeter four pin HD audio jack for a, a stereo headset. So this is stereo headphones plus microphone. We have two USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabit type A ports. The orange or yellow one uh, has higher current for charging devices. We also have a USB 3.2 uh, Gen 2 10 gigabit type C port with alternate display port 1.4 and Thunderbolt 3 that are connected to the processor. We have three activity LEDs for SSD activity and Ethernet activity. These are changeable in the BIOS. We have our full-size SD card slot, and then we also have an, a consumer IR receiver. Along the top, you can see four small holes. This is the quad, quad array far field microphone. Along the front, th these are active air inlet for cooling, as long as uh, along with some small slots along the top here. Along the side you can see additional air inlet and on this side we also have our Kensington lock. Looking at the back and starting at the right side again we have our 7.4 by 5 millimeter power connector. This uses the same 230 watt power adapter that the Hades used. It's 19 volt. We have two video connectors connected to the RTX 2060, MDP 1.4 and HDMI 2.0B. The MDP port does support MST daisy chaining up to four monitors, and you can attach four monitors to the RTX 2060, either all four on the MDP or three on the MDP and one on HDMI. And then we have another, a second, USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabit type C port with alternate display port 1.4 and Thunderbolt attached to the processor. Now the front Thunderbolt and the back Thunderbolt with alternate display port connecting to the processor means that you can get the, the uh, Intel Core i7's XE graphics out. So now you can support monitors on the processor's XE graphics as well as the RTX 2060. And the, the Iris XE graphics supports four monitors as well. So you can plug all four into an MST hub hooked to the back, or you can plug any number to the front and back to get up to four 4K monitors. We have four USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports. We have a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. And we have another HD audio out for this is to drive speakers 
and it also supports Toslink so that you can drive uh, uh, optical sound to your surround sound system. And then we have the hot air exhaust along the bottom. We'll take a look at the inside next. A quick look at the top before we dive inside. On the Hades Canyon, they had a skull that was etched in black paint on a piece of transparent part of the plastic on the lid. On the Phantom Canyon, the lid just has a transparent part of the plastic that's actually transparent. And what they've done is gone to the skull as a removable item here and rotatable. So if you're mounting your Phantom Canyon different directions, you can come in and put the skull in any orientation you need so it's upright as you mount it. Especially if you put it on the stand, you're going to want to turn it, open it, open, take the top off and turn that so that the skull is up. You can also print your own imagery and the backlight will illuminate it through the transparent part of the plastic there. There are eight screws that hold the plastic top on and the tool is shipped with it to remove those. For the other screws, you need a number zero or number one screwdriver. And there's five screws and they're noted with arrows pointing to each of the positions. And don't confuse them with one, holes that don't have arrows because that's where the top lid attaches. After that, we're ready to take it off. You can see the mezzanine connector over here for that's the front panel header and also um, USB ports for I.O. expansion. So we're going to take the plate off real quick. One quick word about uh, following anti-static precautions. Uh, anytime you open the unit, you need to discharge yourself and prevent any kind of static discharge to the sensitive components because it will damage or destroy them. And usually you don't have the immediate consequence of your action. It just becomes flaky and sometimes later it stops working. The backlight has a connector. The cable is easily removed. Just pull, the, grab all four wires and pull it. And then we're going to take a look at the inside real quick. There are two M.2 SSD slots. One supports both SATA and NVMe PCIe SSDs and it supports a 2280 only. The other side supports either a 2280 PCIe NVMe only or a, one a 22110. So now you can put uh, server class uh, SSDs in here or in the future if, if higher capacity SSDs are available in the 22110 they're supported. We have two DDR4 3200 DIMM slots and you can put up to 64 gig of memory here. If you go to the Simply Nook website, you can configure one or both storage locations with up to 16 terabytes of storage and you can configure the memory for up to 64 gigabytes. We also have a user serviceable battery and this just keeps your clock alive whenever the unit's unplugged. And we have our Wi-Fi 6 radio, and you can see the antennas. This is soldered down and not removable. And you can also see the quad microphone, quad far-field microphone plug right there. And that's not much else to see inside. Uh, I will be shooting another video where I tear this down so you can see the blowers. And that's a look at the inside. So as you can see, the Phantom Canyon is packed with I.O. and with the, I -Core, uh, the, the Intel Core i7 processor with XE graphics is powerful enough to handle your video editing, content creation, or serious business work as well as a serious gaming engine with the RTX 2060 to handle all your AAA gaming. Head over to simplynook.com at the links below. Thank you.